Hello and thank you for coming along with me on another outing. Today I'm standing on a rock in the middle of the Menai Strait. So I came down to uh, Porthethwy, or Menai Bridge as it's also known, uh, about an hour ago and it was still pretty dark. But I did get some shots of the bridge before any light broke. Now this shoot is for the usual monthly challenge on the Facebook group Landscape Photography on YouTube UK. Uh, and as you can probably tell from my location, the subject for this month is bridges. And of course, the Menai Bridge is a pretty good subject for any photographer. But one of the main problems with shooting the Menai Suspension Bridge is that there are very few decent angles that you can get to it without it being standard. Now, just up on the road at the top, the A5, which goes from Menai Bridge up to Llanfair Pulf Gwyngeil Gogeriwch Gwyndrobl Llantasilio Gogogoch, there's a parking spot up there with an elevated viewpoint and pretty much every photograph you see of this bridge uh, is taken from there. So what I've done is I've come down right out into the middle of the Menai Strait at a very low tide, which coincided with sunrise. Now, what's happened this morning is that luckily the tide went out. Unfortunately, there was next to no sunrise. So I'm shooting the bridge with a really dark, threatening bank of grey clouds right over it. And one thing I do need to do while I'm here is keep a close eye on the tide because once it turns, it moves extremely quickly and I could be in big trouble. I think I'm all right for now. So let me show you what I'm up to with this image. Now this really is a, a pretty simple shot. I'm shooting at f11 and just slightly overexposing it by shooting in manual because I want to make sure I get plenty of detail. I really don't need to worry too much about clipping highlights because there aren't any. I'm zoomed in at about 80 millimeters. I'm using a shutter speed of about one and a half to two seconds, which is smoothing the water out just a touch. Now one of the problems that photographers have with shooting the Menai suspension bridge is there's only a limited number of positions you can get to where you can get a really good angle on the bridge. Now Jason Jones made a really interesting vlog not too long ago from Church Island which is just across the water here but it gives you a much more oblique angle um, and you're shooting upwards, so unless the sky is interesting, it really does limit your, uh, your options in terms of your composition. You can also go over to the other side, uh, to Menai Bridge, and again, you're pretty much shooting straight up under the, the deck of the bridge. Now, despite the sunset being pretty disappointing this morning, I have spotted just a little bit of light appearing in some high clouds over Church Island. And it just so happens there's this really old ancient stone wall that usually is under the sea at uh, anything other than a really low tide, uh, which has given me quite a nice leading line. As you can see, it points directly at where the sun's just creating a bit of light in the sky, probably not showing up too well on this terrible vlogging camera but uh, it's better than nothing. And I'm gonna make the most of uh, the fact that we've got this low tide and I'm able to get into this position. So again, from an exposure standpoint, it's a really easy shot. Um, no need for bracketing, no need for filters of any sort. And uh, I'm shooting at F18 so that I get the depth of field that I need with about a one second exposure. So I think that's about it for just here. 
What I'm going to do now is get back onto dry land pronto before I get cut off by the tide and then I'll take you up to the bridge itself, tell you a bit more about it and see if we can find some more subjects up there. So my initial shot was taken from right over there, right past those outcrops. Now even though this bridge is in my local patch and I see it and use it all the time, I'm full of admiration for the engineers that put this together 200 years ago with nothing like the sort of heavy lifting gear and plant and equipment we have nowadays. Next year in uh, 2019, it'll be the 200th anniversary of when they started putting this together. It was opened uh, just a few years later in 1826 and there was a huge fanfare about it. Thomas Telford had been tasked with connecting London to Dublin and this was an essential part of that route. The A5 starts its life at Marble Arch in London and goes all the way up to Holyhead, 280 miles. And you can imagine how long that would have taken when this first opened, quite apart from the engineering that it took which for its time was completely revolutionary. What amazes me about this bridge is that when they put it together, all they were allowing for were things like stagecoaches and horses and cart and a few cattle. They couldn't conceive of the sort of traffic that uses this bridge every single day. The deck was originally wooden and that was replaced round about the turn of the 20th century. But apart from that and some strengthening to the uh, cable system, it's pretty much as it was built. So I'm now coming to you live from a traffic roundabout on the A5. I've come over to the Menai Bridge side because this is the only angle you can get a long shot looking straight down the bridge. Obviously I'm waiting for there to be no traffic but from the other side you can't get this shot because there's uh, no leeway to uh, back up from the bridge itself. Again it's another really simple shot. I'm having no trouble at all with the light this morning which is a pity because I would have liked to have had some trouble with it. Shooting at 135 millimeters f11 very straightforward. So this is the view down to the little village of Porthaithwy, or Menai Bridge as it's now known. Looking northeast up towards Bangor Pier. Telford was forced to build the bridge this tall because it was essential that ships could still navigate the strait. Now it's not a traditional cable suspension bridge. 200 years ago, Telford was forced to use the materials they had available at the time, which meant predominantly cast iron. So they forged these huge chain links, which uh, create the main suspension element. So today's outing has been a little bit out of the usual from the sort of stuff that I normally do. As some of you will probably know that I really enjoy uh, our industrial heritage. It always fascinates me what engineers were able to achieve with the sorts of materials and tools that we wouldn't contemplate using in this day and age. And yet look at this, they've built a bridge that's carrying loads of traffic 200 years later. Most modern bridges are specified with a lifespan of 100 to 125 years. So this kind of puts that into perspective. So I hope you've enjoyed this little trip out. As I said, a little bit unusual for me. Probably back to my regular programming next time out. Who knows? But thank you ever so much for coming along with me. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you haven't done it yet, why not subscribe now and join me next time? Cheers.